Hey, good morning. Happy Father's Day to all you papas out there. It's good to have you all with us this morning. Welcome uh, everybody here, and we welcome those online that are joining us this morning. Welcome to Church Without Borders. Um, this is a, a wonderful day to just celebrate what God has done through the fathers in our lives. And, uh, I just want to read you a scripture. It's out of First Thessalonians. It says this. It says, For you know that we have dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and his glory. Let's stand and sing this morning. Join us in worship. The God who ever more will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Lord. And you are. 
are good, you are good. When there's nothing good in me, you are love, you are love. On display for all to see, you are light, you are light. When the darkness closes in, you are hope, you are hope. And you have covered all my sin. You are peace, you are peace. When my fear is crippling, you are true, you are true. Even in my wondering, you are joy, you are joy. And the reason that I sing, you are life, you are life. And your death has lost its sting.
When I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Yes, I do. I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot the yard enough and take me. Revelation 4.11 says, They cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created.
He's coming back, church. He's coming back for us. He's coming back because every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Amen. Amen. Lion of the land.
stop. Stop the Lord of my healing. Who can stop the Lord of my healing? Stop no one. Who can stop the Lord of no my healing? Who can stop the Lord of my healing? Creator of the world. Who can stop the Lord? pray together. Father, we know you are sovereign king. That there is no army that could come against you. You've already won the battle, the battle against sin and death. Jesus, thank you that you endured the cross so that we could live eternally. I pray a blessing on each person that gathered this morning. Lord, I just pray that whatever they're going through, wherever they are, whether it's sorrow or joy, pain or wherever they need to be, God, restore them, heal them, be with them, guide them, strengthen them, encourage them to know that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess because you are the king. Thank you, Lord, that you tore that throne room veil and we can walk in and be with you. And we give you glory. And now we bless the children as they head off to their Sunday school, Lord. And I pray that they would come to know you at the earliest age. Keep them from the scars of sin. Keep us all from the scars of sin. And we give you glory. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. And all God's people said... Amen. We'll be back in a few minutes.
Thanks, Nance. If you guys want to grab a seat, we will, uh, we will continue. Um, before we uh, get started with the message this morning, I just wanted to um, recognize, uh, we just recently, this spring, did a series on family membership, and um, we had uh, several folks respond for the first time to uh, become members here. Some you've seen for a while, um, because I think the last time we actually did this was um, probably close to 12 months ago. And so um, so some of the folks have been around a, a while, others um, have uh, just kind of been around the, the, the last few months. But I wanted to recognize those uh, that responded to that. And uh, I think most of you are here. So when I call your names, if you could just stand up, and that's all the embarrassment we're going to do, okay? You don't have to come up here. But uh, Zachary Brooksy Brooks in the back. We got Ian and Andrea Falthorpe over here. And Maddie Gall. Where's Maddie? There's Maddie. Ryan and Sasha Ortman online, okay. Um, Noah and Kat, Noah's up in the booth. Kat's downstairs with the kids probably. And then uh, Justin and Maria Wallace and their family. Um, so yeah, welcome guys. Also, we just wanna make you aware the next time we do this will probably be this fall. So if you're interested in going through the family membership process, you can go on our website at cwbnj.com and then sign up there. We'll make sure to get you into that class. There's another family that also went through that membership process as well, but they're leaving for Tennessee this week. So we just wanted to say goodbye to them and that's the painters. Um, and so could you guys stand up and why don't you come up? We can pray for you. So you guys leave in a few days, right? Thursday. Okay. Yeah. So come on. Come on up here. This is kind of impromptu. It's all right. <laughs> you guys have been around for a while. Like you, so you, yeah, a little over a year, and you live in the same building as Eric Stein. Yeah, but you're not moving to, um, you're not moving to Cambodia or wherever with him. Okay. No, no. Or he's going to South Africa, I think. But you guys are going to Tennessee. And, uh, yeah, we just want to pray for these guys and lift them up and, and send them off with, uh, yeah, with God's spirit and his blessings. So, Father, thank you for uh, the Painter family. We pray, Jesus, for just your, your blessing on them as they leave us and they start uh, a new chapter in Tennessee. And we just pray, Jesus, for your continued blessing on their family, on the decisions that they make moving forward. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would connect them with a body of believers there that would be uh, able to encourage them and uh, lift them up and help them grow in their faith as well. And we know they will be a blessing wherever they end up. And so just uh, thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you. And, um, and then I think, I, was, I, was, I know I'm forgetting something. That's all right. It'll come. It'll come back. It's long COVID. I always blame my memory loss on long COVID. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, happy Father's Day. And on this Father's Day, um, I'm excited that um, my father is going to be sharing the word this morning. Um, and so, I um, got to hear him every Sunday as, as a kid, growing up as a pastor's kid. And um, I was thinking as, as we were uh, getting ready this morning... Um, one thing you could always count on is if um, my dad went too long, uh, his mom would take out her keys from her purse, and she'd start to, to jingle her, her keys. So I think you're safe from that happening this morning, Dad. But if you happen to hear any jingling, that's, that's probably Edie up in heaven just shaking her keys. So if you could welcome my dad as he comes up and shares the word. ground. So do you all have your keys ready? <laughs> that's a setup, I think. <laughs> but that's true. She would do that. And uh, never to be forgotten. And last week, if you remember, my son, Pastor John, well, let's call him Pastor John. Pastor John did a little illustration about a Cheerio and hair on it. 
and he singled out a young man in, in the group here, Remy. And I told Remy after church that I have the mic this week, Rem. <laughs> uh, no cheerio stories, but I'll pass. He was perfect. There was never anything that he ever did. <laughs> Lightning. Happy Father's Day. I guess what's on my heart is, is uh, when John asked me to share, he gave me plenty of time to think about it, five weeks or something like that. He wanted me to share on the Father heart of God. And uh, I said yes right away. And I uh, didn't have to pray about it. I I wanted to share about the Father Heart of God until I realized that it's a subject that probably takes at least eight weeks to get through, and uh, we have about 20, 25 minutes. Of course, most of that is on my introduction right now, so let's get to it. But uh, I guess the first thing that I, I'd really like to connect with you this morning is that it is Father's Day, and for us earthly fathers, we get honored. But this morning... We're in the presence of Father God. And I have felt really strong at preparing the message that, that this would be a time that we would realize who we are in Christ and that Father God is, in fact, our Father. In some miraculous way, he has chosen you and I, brothers and sisters, and through the miracle of his son, we have been adopted into the family of God. So God the Father is who I like to honor this morning in this message. The Father heart of God. 2 Corinthians six, eighteen, says that I will be a father to you and you shall be my son's and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. <clears throat> you are truly, in every sense, my brothers and my sisters. Sometimes we use that glibly, you know, in, in, in the body of Christ. Hey, brother, you know, hey, sis. You know. No, there's a reality to it. That is, that is difficult to explain other than the Almighty God decided to choose each of us through Jesus Christ to make us family. You are my brother. You are my sister. I should treat you that way, um, honor you that way. Well, I don't know about I, in my experience. I've experienced a lot of tricks from my brothers and my sisters. I won't go into some of them, but some of them are very creative, and, and we have witnesses here um, that have seen them or participated in them over the years. Sometimes a pastor is a, uh, is a target for jokesters, and I guess we all have jokesters in our family. But we are brothers and we are sisters, and we're gathered here this morning to honor Father God and Father God's heart because it is the Father's heart, that heart of love that he has for us that has brought us together as a people. Ephesians verse 1 and 4 to 6 won't be up on the screen because the Lord dropped this one on my heart this morning, as always happens. I'm sure it happens to you. And from the, but I like the New American Standard version of, this, of these scriptures. He says, it says, He, Father God, chose us in Him, Jesus Christ, before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless before Him. What's really interesting is that the only way we can come into the Father's presence is being holy and blameless. And how, do we, how can we possibly become that or, or be that? Well, through Jesus Christ and what he paid on the cross. We have been wrapped with a robe of righteousness so that the Father God sees us in that manner. It says, 
in love, in, in, in Father's love, he predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. God, I don't know how you, how you see God, the Father. Maybe I'll, I, I think I want to share a little bit more about how we see him in a minute, but, but uh, it was his good pleasure to create us. It was his good pleasure uh, to send his son and, and for us to be his children to be adopted by him. Now, if you think adoption is a second-class family member, you're wrong. Everybody say, I'm wrong if I think that. Because you are. We happen to have adopted daughter. And I can tell you that uh, she is as much our blood in a spiritual kind of way that my two sons are. When uh, we chose her, and we, <laughs> I'm going to get through this. We chose her, and we adopted her, and we picked her up five to six years old. We were never sure whether she was five or six, <laughs> but six years old from, she was from South Korea in an orphanage. And we were told that uh, South Korea was closing and that we would never be able to get what we wanted. Well, what we wanted was a girl between the ages of five and six. And they told us, well, it's highly unlikely that that'll happen. The same, basically the same day that I accepted a pastorate, we got a phone call from the adoption agency in Pennsylvania that said, we have a girl for you. And she was six years old. And they sent us a picture of this frail-looking little girl. And so we, as a family, went up into the airport, and we received her as she came off the plane. It was almost like a delivery, if you will. And we received her and took her home, and John and Steve were very amused by her and kept her amused in the car. And she had some issues with motion sickness. But other than that, it was a good trip coming home. <laughs> and... Um, I say all this because I think that when she came, I, th I think I experienced the Father's heart in a, in a different kind of way because she was a stranger that, had, that I had chosen, but she was a stranger that was coming to live with us, and she would moan, and she was going through a period of time there, it was a very short period, but at night she would just moan. She would never cry. She would just moan and grieve. And uh, one morning, like two o'clock in the morning, I went into her room that we had set for her and I picked her up and I took her downstairs and we went in the kitchen because I didn't want her to wake up the boys. And, and I was on my knees and this skinny, frail, lovely little girl um, was just moaning. And I, asked, I started praying for her, and I asked the Lord, show me your heart. I mean, show me, show me how, you know, how can I help her? And, and the Lord revealed that, that I needed to, to hold her and to pray. And so I'm on my knees at her heart eye level. I put my arms around her. And uh, actually, I just put my arms around her shoulders, as I recall. And I be just began to pray. And her moaning stopped. And she burst out crying. Deep crying. And her little skinny arms went around my neck. And she was just squeezing. And I knew that moment we had a daughter. She wasn't a little stranger anymore. We had chose her. She came to us. She threw her arms around my neck. And from that, and just wept and wept and wept. And it was done. 
She was, every, every night after that, she would sneak into the boys' room and sleep on the floor. But uh, she had her own room, but she wanted to sleep on the floor with the boys. And uh, it, everything changed. And I see in that the Father heart of God, because isn't that what he did for us? The exact same thing. Didn't, didn't he cho choose us? Weren't we moaning or groaning or going that way? I'm so far off my notes, it's ridiculous. But <laughs> I can't get back there. But, but anyway, uh, it's, it's, it's the same. And that Father's heart for us, when he, when he saw that we were like the prodigal son, maybe some of us living in a pigsty, but we, we came to him. And he threw his arms around us, and he received us, and he, and 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 it, and it changed our life. And it says that that according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace. How many are thankful for grace this morning, which he favored us in the beloved. Um, A.W. Tozier, in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, says this, what comes, to in, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Let me repeat that. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. What is he saying? When you think about Father God, Jesus, I'm, you know, since yay high, I never had trouble picturing Jesus, you know. Hollywood took care of that, you know. Books, you know, everything. God the Father, when you picture God the Father, what comes into your mind? Because this is, this is, God the Father just loves us. God, God the Father is the reason we are who we are. He created us. He has a plan for our lives. But when I think of him, some, you know, I remember my dad saying, well, it's the man upstairs. That's Father God is the man upstairs. I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have trouble relating to the man upstairs or the great scorekeeper in the sky. Yeah? With thunderbolts. Oh, you shouldn't do that. He did this. Oh, that's good. He did that. That's bad. So he's got this iPad where, he, he, you know, you get before him and at the, at the Golden Gates, if you will, and, and he said, ah, well, you know, it's close. It's close. Okay, you're in, you know. And, and so for some reason, as a child growing up with a lot of religious people, that was kind of like the great scorekeeper in the sky. Uh, or do you see him as he wants you to see him? Not as your earthly father, but as your perfect heavenly father who made you and has a plan for you in your life. How we see him is most important. If, if you see God as a father, you can relate to him. Otherwise, you can't. All these other mystic kinds of things. But he's a father. He, he, he wants, God wants us to see him as, as a father. Jesus makes that clear in, in John 14, 6, when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father. It's interesting that he didn't say my Father because he was talking to all of us. Jesus is saying, you know, when you come to the Father, except through me. 189 times in four Gospels, Jesus refers to God as Father. In Matthew 6, verse 9, he, he said... When you pray, pray this way. How? How? Again? Our Father who happens to dwell in heaven. 
our Father. If you hear anything this morning that I say, hear this. There is a Father in heaven that loves you, that has a plan for your life. And it's as, it's as intimate as maybe that sharing that I just gave of my daughter. He cares like, he cares like, he, he cares deeper than that. <clears throat> the Bible lists many names for God. But stunning, stunning, uh, stunningly, the most personal name is Father. When, um, I'm going to skip that. The story of the prodigal son recorded in Luke 15 is often called the parable of the father's heart. And uh, I believe we have that uh, to put up. Luke chapter 15, verse 20 starts. But I'm, I'm skipping through the son. How many remember that uh, Jesus tells of two sons, one who asked for his inheritance and was given his inheritance in advance. And uh, he went out and he squandered it and he wound up finding himself br uh, broke, lonely, unloved, and a pigsty. And the scripture says, the young man, quote, came to his senses. So was there ever a time in your life when just maybe you came to your senses about God? He, re he recognized the insensibility of the pathway he had chosen, and he returned humbled. And we pick up the story that Jesus is telling, and in Jesus telling this story, he is revealing the Father heart of God. In Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 20, it says, And he arose, he being the prodigal son, and he came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. How many can hear an act of repentance in that? But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. And they began to celebrate. Oftentimes we speak of a, of a, a sinner who comes and accepts Christ and that there is rejoicing in heaven. It's kind of like the party that the father is throwing uh, for this lost son. He says, for my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. And they began to celebrate. What we see is that what illustrated here is the father heart of God in Jesus' story. The father never lost hope for his son. Father God never loses hope for us. Even when we are in the, we're in the worst conditions that we could have possibly been. He had a plan for our lives. He never lost hope, and he was, he was watching. He wa always, Father is always looking our way, and not to hit us with thunderbolts or, or lightning bolts. Never saw a thunderbolt. But <laughs> Father is always looking our way. Jesus shows us the Father's heart. So from a great way off, it's almost like when we decided and repented of God, it wasn't so far that we had to go. He was already running towards us. And he responds to our, to our repentance. Repentance, of course, can never be bypassed with Father God. Father, I've sinned against, he said in verse 21, Father, I've sinned against heaven, and I've sinned against you. And the Father responded. What's interesting, too, is in the illustration that that in story that Jesus gave, the father reinstated or took the lost son and placed him back into his plan. It's that Jesus does that for us, too. No matter how far we've gone off in our lives to away from his plan, when we come back to him, he reinstates everything and the, and the, the plan for our life. Let's, let's do it God's way, and let's not do it our way. 
So the ring really represented that the father gave the son there. It was prominence back in the family. God is saying, the, <clears throat> saying through the lips of his own son, if you'll come back to me, I will return to you all the possibilities that were there for your life. The robe, of course, he covers him with the robe. That, that's obvious. We're covered with the robe of righteousness. And the shoes they, they, that he gives him is preparing him for his journey. Um, I like to, I kind of rushed through that because I spent so much time with Julie. That's my daughter. <laughs> uh, by the way, Julie is married today, and she has two children, and she has a wonderful husband. And uh, Sarah, her oldest, uh, and her daughter graduated and is going to college next, next year. And uh, Sean is... How old, Eileen, you do this? This is what you do, Eileen. <laughs> 16. Sean is 16. Sean, interestingly enough, Julie called me and she said, Dad, I want to name him after you. I'm going to name the boy after you. And um, so Sean is a Gaelic for John. So, yeah. There you go, Joel. Uh, um, just ask the worship team if they could come up now. Uh, and I want to close with, I have to land somewhere. And where I'm going to land is that um, in Colossians 1.16, it says that all things were made by him and for him. How many believe God made all things? How many believe God made you? How many believe God made you for him? What's the for him have to do with the making? So we're not a product of some random explosion, the big bang, and suddenly we're all walking on the earth. Boy, talk about dumb. <laughs> you were made by God for God, and you have a purpose. There is something, and I believe it's, it's part of the Holy Spirit's job, if not the, one of the most important parts of the Holy Spirit's job, is there's something in our hearts, our being, that when he made us, that he put in there, that it's, that's in our heart, and it has, um, it's almost like it's wired to his heart. And it's that thing that maybe we've all felt where no matter what, where we were in our walk, whether before we met Jesus or after we met Jesus, there's this, there's this hunger, there's this, there's this pull, there's this attraction that everybody, I believe, feels it, but not everybody responds to it in the same, in the same way. Some people ignore it. Some people try to fill that, some, something that's been called hunger in the past. Maybe, but it's that it's a, I believe it's it's the father heart of God that's drawing us to him. And. Um, and there's a reason why he's doing that. He's drawing us to himself. It's a heart to heart thing. And. Uh, and I, I believe if we identify why Jesus came, we'd understand why we. Are here. You know, Jesus came, obviously, to seek and save the lost, to die for our sins. But he also was here to display Father God's love. He was on earth to display the Father heart of God. So we see, and Jesus said, you know, what, what do you mean you, you want to know, you want to see God? You see me. You see me. And so it is with us, as we are, we are the adopted sons and the adopted daughters of Father God. And we receive the love of the Father. And in turn, what we are to do is to respond in the same way and show Father heart love of God to others. Now, the thing was, Jesus showed that love to some people that weren't really accepted by the religious people of his time. 
Now, we don't have that problem today. People don't say, oh, you know, did you see that homeless guy there? You know, he's cursed. You know. Jesus would, would take him to lunch is what Jesus would probably do. The religious would say, ah, yeah. sin caused that. Well, sin probably did cause that, but we're not called to be finger pointers or religionists. We're called to face people as Jesus would face people and, expo and expose the Father heart of God to them. That's our job. That's why he made us. That's why we are for his pleasure to demonstrate the Father heart of God to the lowest, to the most disrespected, I guess. And I close with that. But I would say that for the Christian church today and for the people of God today, we need a lot more exposure of the Father heart of God to people and less finger pointing. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We want to uh, take some time to respond to our Father this morning, and um, we're going to do that through worship in just a second. And, um, and we're going to have some folks up here to my right and my left to pray with you uh, if you're in need of prayer as well. And we're also going to respond with communion, and we do this uh, each week because um, we want to remember uh, what had to happen in order for us to be able to call one another brother and sister and to have God as our Father. It's because of what Jesus has, has accomplished for us. And so if you didn't get one of these uh, cups when you came in this morning and you want to participate in, in uh, communion with us, if you could just lift your hand up, and uh, Nancy's going to come around uh, with the basket and uh, make sure you get one. So just keep your hand up until you've got, until you've got one. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you that, um, that you have chosen us, that you've made us a part of your family. Um, and thank you, Jesus, for doing what was necessary in order for that miracle to take place. Thank you for um, laying down your life for sacrificing your body and your blood for us, that we could live eternally with you as a part of your family. And we, we do echo this prayer that, um, that we heard this morning, that you would uh, enable us as your kids to show your Father's heart to those around us, that we would reflect the heart of our Father um, to all of those that we meet, to the people that we uh, run into during the week, whether it's, it's at work, um, family, friends, that we would be able to demonstrate the Father's heart and the Father's love to those around us. And uh, we know that we can only do that, Jesus, through, um, through your strength and through the change that you've uh, made in our hearts. Um, help us to display that to others this week. And we just ask your blessing on us and that you would instill in us just a greater appreciation and understanding of you, God, as Father. That when we think of you, God, our first thought that would come into our minds is our Father who loves us. In Jesus' name, let's take and eat together. Tender 
that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Good, good, fine. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who Yeah.
I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God dad for that word and that reminder of the father's heart for us um if you're not careful we might have to pull you out of retirement that's uh <laughs> you keep that up um <laughs> not like i'll be out of a job or anything i was just not saying that um also just uh be sure to uh say bye to the painter family as they leave for tennessee on thursday and um, yeah, other than that, you guys have a great week and happy Father's Day.
just said that? I don't even know the words. Who just said throw that? 